All right, this is um, the second part of the ankle lecture. Um, so on your notes, it starts at general principles. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice for um, in the book, there's several pictures of massage to the foot and ankle. And um, good old Peggy Hoogland, she loves to do um, massage, um, which really I'm only going to highlight a couple of them that I think are um, in particular uh, more effective than all of them through the book, but sometimes we'll use um, massage to achieve our um, first goal of pain relief, um, and especially this massage where the foot is coming over a roller or golf ball, um, we'll use with plantar fasciitis um, to uh, stretch out the fascia on the bottom of the foot, especially in the morning. So that is a stretch that I'll sometimes recommend um, for that. Um, she demonstrates some trigger point release, which um, you may or may not choose to use. I don't do much trigger point release um, for plantar fascia, but you might find it helpful um, for pain relief. And then also um, for pain relief, ice and stretch, and she shows several different techniques um, again for this. Um, <clears throat> the second goal after we relieve pain is oftentimes in rehab to increase flexibility or range of motion. So one of the things that we may choose to do is joint mobilization. So um, if we talk about the talocrural joint, um, remember we have um, a convex surface, we're moving on a can concave um, surface. So um, if we're trying to increase um, dorsiflexion so the foot would come up so we need to glide the talus down or posterior um, this is just distraction in this picture um, but this would be a good picture demonstrating a posterior glide to increase dorsiflexion um, of an ankle um, we could also um, do tailor glide their tailor curl glides with them um, a mobilization belt. Um, we don't have these um, at the facility at Bethel, um, but if you go to a clinic you may see these utilized a fair amount. So in this case um, she's actually um, positioning or holding the talus and gliding the tib and fib anterior so effectively it's gliding the, pos the talus posterior so again we're working on um, dorsiflexion either way. Uh, we could also do um, medial glides if we want to improve eversion. So here's a picture of her doing medial glides of the talus, um, lateral glides to improve inversion. So we're going to go the opposite, glide the opposite direction um, of what we want to increase. So on your notes, I put um, under the column where it says question on question, I'm asking um, what surface is moving on what. So on the talocrural joint, our movements of plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, we have convex moving on concave. Um, in the subtalar joint, um, uh, below that, so between the talus and navicular, where we're getting more inversion and eversion, again, we're still convex on concave. And then as we move into the intertarsal joints, um, in general, we're looking at convex um, on concave there too. Um, most of the times, though, in the intermetatarsal joints, we'll just do AP glides, which are anterior posterior glides, just moving them back and forth to get more movement out of that. Um, we might do some distraction or um, first ray distraction where we pull um, the first ray and we can work all the way through the fifth ray. Um, as we move on into ankle range of motion, um, oftentimes uh, active flexibility exercises um, will be done and um, for 15 or 20 second holds and we'll repeat them four or five times. Um, so um, we can use these for range of motion exercises. Here we got somebody on a glider and somebody on a bike um, that can help improve range of motion. Um, I'm just going to go through a few examples of these, and these are listed in um, your handout. So if we're trying to improve um, just general movement, we could do ankle pumps, uh, alphabet seated BAPS board, and I got a picture later in here that shows a BAPS board. Um, and um, stationary bike and cross-country ski machine would be general ankle movements. If we want to specify um, a movement like dorsiflexion, we could use the gastroc stretch. Um, this is, of course, in weight-bearing. Um, 
or they could do that um, soleus stretch again uh, in weight bearing. Um, in non weight bearing, we have a lot of um, variety or different ways that um, we could go there too with the roller or the um, pole strap, um, Achilles prolonged stretch. Um, a plantar flexion stretch, I'll use this one quite a bit um, for the anterior ankle. Um, on your notes, and I don't have a picture of this, but I do have um, first toe extension or great toe stretching. Um, so we're working on the MPT, metatars or MTP, metatarsal phalangeal joint um, at the first ray, and we'll just pull the toe into um, extension. Um, we do that a lot for Plantar, or, uh, plantar fasciitis. And then inversion and eversion stretch. Typically those just are manual self-stretches. I'll say just take your hands, pull the ankle into inversion, pull the ankle into eversion. Um, even though those just technically are subtalar movements. Um, but we usually don't have a problem with those. Um, and we don't use any equipment. It's just a manual stretch. So here's some ideas for strengthening exercises. Um, Tubing is often used here um, in the first picture. She's going into eversion um, of bringing the foot um, out and then going into eversion or inversion on this um, right hand picture. You need to make sure that the person doesn't cheat. So if they're laying on the floor with their leg extended out, they may roll from the hip in inversion and eversion. But if um, they're seated and their knee is bent, or if they're sitting on the floor and the knee is bent, um, it's easier to control that motion. So it might be better for you when you're instructing this to try to teach somebody to lay um, with their knee and bent. So here we've got um, dorsiflexion. We could also do the same movements with cuff weights um, so we have the same resistance all the way through. Um, heel raises um, on an incline. Um, intrinsic toe exercises um, with a, um, a towel and then you put weight on the edge of it or marble pickup or um, pencils using those to pick up. Um, Toe raises on an incline, so we're working the anterior tib, extensor digitorum muscles here. All right, so before I go on, um, I just want you, as you look at your notes and the strengthening exercises, um, I did mention at the top muscles that um, work primarily to plantar flex the foot, um, gastroc soleus and posterior tib, what will do work primarily to dorsiflex, um, invert and evert, and so those might be helpful if you're trying to isolate out um, more specifically a muscle and what motion it does. Um, we can also do isometrics. If you're doing an isometric, we want a six second hold um, and doing about 10 to 15 reps. And remember, um, we have to change the angle every, so that every um, 10 or 15 degrees we do another set of 10 um, isometric holds. Um, because with an isometric we'll get stronger in a 30 degree range. So 15 degrees um, before the position, 15 degrees after the position, um, whatever angle that's held at is going to get stronger. Um, so make sure that the angle is varied. And of course you can do isometrics for inversion, eversion, um, plantar and dorsiflexion. Uh, note on the rubber tubing, um, they come in different colors. The darker the color, the more resistance. Uh, so usually uh, the lightest color you can get is white, and then there's yellow, red, blue. It goes on to, um, I think there's gray and black too if you want to get um, into the really tough ones. Um, I think we're back on track here. Um, so a weight scale exercise sometimes is used if somebody has to do um, an exercise where they are 50% weight bearing or 75% weight bearing on the involved leg and they might not know what that feels like so you can use a scale just um, have them with their involved leg on the scale and they just transfer their weight um, onto the scale so if they're if they weigh um, 150 pounds and they're supposed to be 50% weight bearing then just have them shift um, their weight onto the foot that's on the scale until they hit about 70 pounds and then they can kind of get a feel for what that's like to be at 50% weight bearing. So just an idea. Um, looks like this guy is very surprised at doing stork stand. So this is under our coordination activities um, and we can use a variety of surfaces, <laughs> um, floor, um, 
the half foam roller, the mini tramp, um, all sorts of ways that we can do this. Um, can move on to um, agility exercises, again, depending on their sport and um, how hard you want to push them, what level they should be at. So we can use the fitter is what we call the apparatus on the left-hand side here. Um, and here she's got tubing and having him jump to different locations um, on an angle grid. Um, just a few ideas working somebody into plyometrics, um, moving around. Um, on boxes, off boxes, turn and twist. So we'll do a lot of these with ankles. So I'll start thinking of some creative ideas that you might use for the sports. Here he has to do a shuffle. So we're adding a little bit of agility with the box activities. And then higher jump. So increasing the intensity by increasing the height of the plyometric. And then on the treadmill, there can be all sorts of different exercises, um, forwards, backwards, side steps. Um, they can do karaoke's, all sorts of activities um, that can be made or made up um, on the treadmill. Um, hopping patterns, here's a few that you might choose to utilize if you're asked to do um, hopping patterns um, with our case studies. So these are just some standard ones. You certainly don't have to use them, but they might be helpful. So forward, backward hop over a line, um, straight line hopping. So um, hop forwards and then backwards, um, side to side hop, hop lateral between um, two quadrants and cross pattern hop. So you go just single leg one, you go lateral, then diagonal up and then um, diagonal or lateral across again so a one two three four and then you can go in the reverse direction of course one two three four so it's only limited by your uh, imagination on these some ideas for cardiovascular if somebody has an ankle injury of course we're going to have to think about upper body ergometer um, the aqua jogger using a stationary bike if they're able to and then a statement on functional exercises that by the end of the rehab program that a patient with a foot or ankle injury needs to be able to perform their sport specific activities. Um, for example, a zigzag run or 90 degree cuts to the right and left. If that is performed in their sport, they need to do that without hesitation. They need to be able to do it smoothly and efficiently. So when you're watching an athlete, those are the things that you're going to be looking for. They can perform them without hesitation, smoothly and efficiently. More hot patterns if you're running low on those.